In studio with New York Times best-selling author, the social assassin, John Gilstrap. Johnny, good morning to you. Good morning. Jefferson County prosecuting attorney, star of many newspaper articles across the globe, Matt Harvey. Matt, good morning. Good morning. Great to have you here. I want to be uh, like a some sort of assassin, like a trout assassin. or the Trial assassin? You want to be the trial assassin? No, trout. Trout assassin. Yeah, something. Uh, You're a buck assassin. I saw those pictures with you and Riley Moore. <laughs> You did. I yeah. did, yeah. I've got those photos. Yeah, well, you had some of the actual deer as well. I brought it in. What Remember? did you What did you bring in? I brought in the, the deer bologna. Oh, that's right, deer bologna. Yeah, you brought in some a, jerky, too, didn't you? Yeah, it's, it's well, it's, it's it's like a snack stick. It's called deer bologna, but it was it's like your summer sausage. It was yummy. Yeah, and yeah. your snack sticks that they do out at Rolling Acres, and it, they do a great job and do, take care of all the hard part. Hunting. Hey, can I can I make good on the uh, what I slaughtered on the previous open at, at, at the previous hour on not a deer either? Right? No, 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 no. On, on, on April sixth, I was I'd be with Jennifer Armentrout at the Martinsburg P- Berkeley County Public Library at an event that's being sponsored by Four Seasons Books. Uh, it's bringing a thriller author and romance author together. I've never done something like this before. Tickets are required. It's 2 p.m. It'll be the same day as the first day of the home show. To get tickets, go to fourseasonsbooks.com. It's, it uh, don't cost nothing, uh, but it, they do want it to be a ticketed event for, for whatever reasons. So it'd be great to come out and meet people. Uh, you want to bring books to be signed, that's fine. You want to buy books to be signed, that's fine too. That's even better, right? Yeah, that's even better. Well, and because you're buying them from the... the yeah, Four Seasons Books is providing sponsor. the books, and and the library system is sponsoring the place. And, and Jennifer is a Berkeley County? Berkeley yes. Berkeley Countyan? Yeah, and she, she's a local author, and we, I, we've we never met. She writes in a genre that is not mine, obviously, in, in romance. She's fabulously successful. And... Um, so it'll be it'll be great get to meet her and we get to meet each other and it'll be a nice event. I was just it was uh, I tried to pull something off the top of my head and our network our internet's not working here and I wasn't able to pull it up and I slaughtered it the, during the first hour. Maybe so I make sure uh, I did it right. Maybe a collabs in the future like fifty like fifty oh. shades of Smith and Wesson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a there, probably not, but interesting title. The governor yesterday <laughs> vetoed the vaccination bill that had gotten through the House and the Senate. He had been lobbied by the health departments and many medical professionals around the state to do so, which he did do. We bring in Bill Kearns, the executive director of the Berkeley County Health Department this morning, uh, sparing a few minutes of his time for us today. Bill, good morning. Thank you for being with us. Hey, good morning, Rob, and good morning, John and Matt. And, and Matt, I actually like the trial assassin better. Better, no. than no, better than the trout assassin. No, yeah, trout. I said it's trout. A, it sounded like I've been trout. thinking about trout fishing. Because your Monroe County accent, it sounded a little bit more like trial. It sounded like trial. I don't. Yeah. I no. I don't want. I don't like that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> too bad. That that kind of cements it. You shouldn't have said that out loud. <laughs> now you're the trial assassin. <laughs> Please don't throw me in the briar patch. Will you ever be known? Yeah. Uh, Bill, tell us about this veto yesterday and. Uh, you're lobbying the Berkeley County Health Department's efforts behind that. Well, we didn't lobby. Right, we, and that's an illegal actually, word for you. It is an absolute illegal word. I liked my job for a little while longer. Um, but we educated. Um, and, you know, I, I, I'm proud of our governor. There's many things that I may say from time to time, he shouldn't have done this or he should have done this. But, you know, this one he, he heard. He heard what was coming from the people. You know, he heard that this House bill, which, by the way, is, was uh, 5105, was going to basically carve out and, and allow this freedoms um, exemption to private and parochial institutions or schools. Um, but it was going to still provide all the great protection that we've had over uh, most of our lifetimes of providing that immunization requirement to our children in public schools. Now, for the life of me, I can't wa- see why you would protect one group and not the other. Um, but either way, we were going down a very slippery path that we were going to take a chance of these children um, not being vaccinated and have a chance of them getting these diseases that 
many, if not majority, have been eradicated. And the governor, the governor listened. You know, I, I like what he had in his statement that he put out, that he listened to the medical professionals that work in this every day. You know, it, we, we, we put our trust in our, our legislators, and so many times they're, they're putting bills out there that are not good for the many. It's good for the few that got it to their attention. This, was, this is something that West Virginia does right, providing immunizations. We are known as one of the top states in the United States for doing this right. We can't, we can't claim that for a lot of things, but for this, we do it right. And they wanted to do this house bill would have been doing nothing would have done nothing but destroy what we are doing right. Um, so the governor saw that he spoke with people that are that operate every day in their medical practices and their health departments, and that we provide these immunizations and we see these people that are coming into our offices. We we are the subject matter experts on this, and uh, and that's. Don't say that lightly, but we are the subject matter experts because we deal with immunizations and we deal with what would have to ha- what would happen if we did not vaccinate these children um, to bring back polio. To bring- that was public health um, in force during those times of having to combat that, same as we did for many of the other diseases. Um, so I'm so glad that the governor did look at this, and I, I think he did really battle over what to do. But at the end of the day, our governor did what was right. Yeah, a lot of people were surprised by that. They thought he might, uh, because it's an election year, do nothing and just let the bill become law by virtue of uh, inactivity. But he actually uh, surprised some people and and did uh, sign the veto on this. Uh, It can be overridden if the uh, the House and the Senate want to go back in and and do that. But that uh, that does take some effort. And uh, there are some steps you have to go through to do that. Yeah, Bill. Any final I, thoughts? Oh, Good. Yeah, I, I actually had talked to a couple legislators and, and actually had mentioned to me. I'm not. Sure, I, I was surprised that they did, but they said they did not want to go against this because it was an election year, mm-hmm. which is very sad because you're putting your position as a as a legislator above the, the the desires and the needs to protect our children. So again, I'm just so glad that our governor did the right thing. And I hope and pray that this doesn't see the light of day again, but unfortunately there isn't again next year. Bill, thank you. Appreciate your time this morning. Hey, you all have a great day. You too. All right, bye. Bill Kearns.